just to know that these people are off the street, not just to not hurt our families, but not to hurt other families too. Relief tonight, just one night after an Omaha father told us about his quest to help Omaha police find his daughter's killer. Police say the man who pulled the trigger is behind bars tonight. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Griswold. And I'm Craig DeGrelli. Authorities have charged Akeem Jones with murder in the deaths of Janisha Brown and Stephen Arps last November in Omaha. Kevin Boughton spoke with Brown's father just after prosecutors told him about the arrest. He's live at the Douglas County Jail tonight. Kevin? Wofford says he's happy Akeem Jones is locked up here in the county jail tonight. But if you look at court records and police reports, you'll find that Akeem Jones has faced serious charges like this before and beaten them. Back in his old neighborhood, steps from where his daughter was shot and killed, Johnny Wofford admits he doesn't come around here much anymore. Um, these months have been really rough. I mean, kind of, kind of being afraid of things. Um, we kind of like just stay away from the old neighborhood. He moved not long after his daughter's death, but now he's breathing easier after police arrested the man they believe killed Wofford's daughter, Johnny Shea Brown, and her boyfriend, Stephen Arps, outside of her parents' home at 45th and Grand in November. Thursday, prosecutors charged 24-year-old Akeem Jones with two counts of first-degree murder. Jones was already in jail after he was arrested and charged with being an accessory to another double homicide in Omaha in January. He's been in this situation before. In 2009, prosecutors charged Jones with killing a man during a convenience store robbery. Police say this surveillance video shows Jones firing the gun. But prosecutors later dropped charges when no witnesses would testify. And Jones soon returned to the streets. Very, very satisfying to be able to, to be a part of telling them, hey, uh, the killer's behind bars. Officer James Shade says Wofford did the right things after his daughter's death, working with police and putting up this billboard at 38th and Ames, asking the public for tips. So it's fantastic that this is uh, finally coming through for them. It's been an emotional journey. This is Wofford the night after his daughter died. These are babies killing babies. I have never seen a grown 40, 50 year old man go out and do something he ain't got to do. Still, I still feel the exact same way. There's nothing like burying your child. I mean, I'm still not processed at what I did. I think I did the best I could do with the help of other people. Wofford told me tonight he's grateful to the Omaha Police Department for their work to find and arrest Jones. He said he feels like there's a weight lifted off of his chest tonight. Jones's first scheduled court appearance is July 28th. Live downtown tonight, Kevin Bouton, KMTV, Action 3 News. Just last year, Akeem Jones joined community members calling for peace after somebody shot and killed five-year-old Peyton Benson in her own home at 45th and Bedford. He spoke as a member of Impact One's Game Changers program. It's an effort to keep people away from gang violence. Here's what he said in January of 2014. We need the community as a whole, as far as the police, the mayors, gang members, college students, whatever, and we all need to come together as one and really support each other and just not... And KMTV has learned that police nabbed Akeem Jones in Operation TGIF. As part of that sting operation, more reputed gang members and guns are off the streets tonight. The numbers are staggering. Omaha police teamed up with U.S. Marshals to arrest nearly 150 suspects, one-third known gang members. They also seized dozens of guns and thousands of dollars in drugs. Here's the police chief. If you want to do a shooting in our city, you want to retaliate for that shooting, you want to engage in gang and gun violence, you not only have the Omaha Police Department, but you have our federal partners addressing that matter as well. Police started planning the operation in January. They conducted it the day after Officer Carrie Orozco's funeral.